A uh, very special guest next up. We have, if you've been following him on Twitter, you'll know he's been a bit quiet for the last two weeks, but here he is. It's James Chapman! Hello, citizens of the world. Um, there are people here from today from all parties and none, and uh, you're all very welcome. Uh, most of you don't know who I am, but until a few weeks ago, I was uh, working just over there uh, in number nine Downing Street, actually, as chief of staff to uh, the Brexit department. You, you're allowed to boo at, at that point, if you like. <laughs> I, I worked on Brexit for a year in government because I believe in public service, and I felt a sense of duty to try and implement the result of the referendum that was called. And we, I will say this, we owe an enormous debt of gratitude to the uh, fine public servants doing their utmost to implement the result of that referendum, even though most of them think it's uh, a disaster, really, of epic proportions. It's taken a heavy toll on them and their families, and I've paid a price too. The stress uh, I experienced was like nothing I've never known before, and I was previously police editor of the Daily Mail, so I know a thing or two about stress. <laughs> You can, boo, you can boo that too. Uh, as Chief of Staff, it regularly fell on me and on my colleagues to take decisions that we knew were going to affect the lives of millions of people, fundamentally affect millions of people's lives. Um, I'm afraid it was clear from a very early stage to me that our ludicrous Foreign Secretary's repeated insistence that the UK would have its cake and eat it had so infuriated European capitals that no deal at all was likely to be achieved. Indeed, Michel Barnier and Jean-Claude Juncker always struck me as being determined to shove a pie in Boris Johnson's face and probably not one containing custard. And so here we are today, Britain, and it's great to see so many of you here. We're led by a weak and a divisive Prime Minister, a Brexit Secretary with no Plan A, let alone a Plan B, and a Foreign Secretary who is an international laughingstock. And just think how far we have fallen, Britain. Only five years ago at the London Olympics, we all remember that magnificent opening ceremony when we celebrated our rich, open, diverse culture, our proud global history, and the difficult moments in our history too. And, and the world looked on London as the global capital. We were the capital of the world. I've travelled across the EU with David Davis, and I can tell you that most of our EU counterparts take no pleasure at all in what's happened here. Indeed, they regard the UK now with a mixture of sadness, actually, and pity, too. The Conservative Party, the party I used to work for but was never a member of, is lashed to the mast of hard Brexit, and unless it changes course soon, it will go down with the ship. And everybody here will make sure that happens. <clears throat> uh, the Labour Party, I'm sad to say, is no better. All those young people who voted for Jeremy Corbyn, hoping that he would provide a more sensible Brexit course have had those hopes cruelly dashed. And despite the effort, there are good, look, there are good, decent MPs in the Labour Party. There are MPs, I hope, that are watching this. People like Rachel Reeves, Chukura Munna, uh, Pat McFadden, Emma Reynolds. These are decent people. They know that what the course that we are headed on is taking us to disaster. We are heading for a cliff. And I'm really sorry that they haven't felt brave enough to be with us today and to tell us what they really think. The truth is, is that the, le the leader of the Labour Party is as hell-bent on a hard Brexit as is the woman that occupies Number 10 Downing Street. Yeah. Now, some of you won't like this, but the Liberal... I know there are, you're here in big numbers today, and the Liberal Democrats, and I listened to Ed Davey, somebody I respect and admire earlier today, but I'm afraid they are now the fourth party in the House of Commons. They have just 12 MPs, and they struggle to be heard. Their brand is permanently damaged by coalition with the Conservatives, however unfair that may be. So in my view, it's time for something new. We need a party called the Democrats, and we would halt Brexit on the grounds of national, economic, and geopolitical interest, and we should not have a second referendum. In Germany, there's a reason that Germany bans referendums altogether. We are a proud parliamentary democracy. We are not a democracy, the destiny of which is going to be determined on an opinion poll taken on one day, and let's be honest, based on a pack of lies. Yeah. We want a government that can get on with what really matters, and that's ensuring sound money, strong public services, a clean environment, 
meeting our international aid obligations, jobs and opportunities for all. Now, the Democrats are a fledgling organization. I'm talking to people, and if anybody, if you want to talk to me afterwards about helping out, I'd be really grateful. But we want policies in all these areas. We don't want to be just an anti-Brexit party. We want to show that Margaret Thatcher is an inversion of the phrase. There is an alternative. There is an alternative. And the consequences of not changing course will be dire. I want to take one example. When I was working for the government, civil servants would regularly inquire whether we wish to start hiring and training the, the customs officers, thousands and thousands of customs officers that we will need if we really do intend to leave the U uh, customs union. 100% uh, of produce, Mr. Obani has been absolutely clear, 100% of produce will have to be checked as it crosses into the EU. And they pointed out to me as gently as possible that we have a grand total of 10 lorry bays at Dover. Uh, because Margaret Thatcher's single market, it is Margaret Thatcher's single market, let's remember that. Uh, that means that very little has to be checked at present. We'll need, if we proceed with Brexit, 1,000 lorry bays at Dover. Has this government done any work on this? Have they hired any of these staff? Have they hell? No work's been done on it. Take another example. I want another example I want to talk about because I used to be in the media. Broadcasting. It's a great British success story. Uh, and again and again, uh, executives at big US television companies uh, who have their head, uh, EU headquarters here in the UK um, employing you know, thousands of people, Disney and uh, Discovery are based in Hammersmith. Maybe some of you work for them or know people that do. They would ask to see ministers to discuss the implications of leaving the European Broadcasting Union. Simply put, they will have to move. They didn't want to, but they'd had no option. Did senior ministers engage in Brexit, deign to meet them to hear their concerns? No, they did not. This same sorry story, I'm afraid, can, and it will be told if I have anything to do with it, across almost every sector of our economy. Aviation, pharmaceuticals, automotive, chemicals, architecture, computing, nuclear power, medicine. The list goes on and on and on. Indeed, the government is disgracefully refusing to publish its own assessment of the impact of Brexit on over 50 sectors. It says that's because that would undermine negotiations. I say it's because of how terrible it looks. Now, this is, in my mind, nothing short of misconduct in public office. Yet, has our media been hammering on the door of number 10, asking for the truth? No, they haven't. And they're failing us too, day after day after day. So I know, I know we need to wrap things up. I'm being told we've got to wrap up. But to conclude, it's time for something new. There is an alternative, something challenging. Look at what Emmanuel Macron has shown you, we, the, can, what can be done in France. All of us here today may see ourselves as British, Scottish, Welsh, French, Greek, Irish, German, but we're all Europeans. We are all Europeans. And we won't let Theresa May, we refuse to let Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn destroy that. We cannot allow that to happen, and it's for our children that we must continue this fight. So I ask you, I ask you all to say with me today, I am a European. This is for Athens, where I have a special family interest. Ima Europeos. For Paris, je suis européenne. For Berlin. Ich bin ein European. Ich bin ein European. Thanks very much.